a very warm welcome to everyone today on thoughts on education we have with us professor krishna durba professor of analytics at nmims bangalore sir has over 31 years of experience he has handled pnl what 2 billion dollars portfolio and over 100 million customers in the telecom market sir is an engineer come mba from iim ahmedabad and he has worked with various big companies like deloitte infosys cognizant as a global consultant and has advised the fortune 50 companies over analytics ai and ml sir is also currently pursuing a phd in the same field of ai and ml and we are also glad to know that sir is also the chairperson of the e mba program here at nmims bangalore so we are really really honored to have today on the panel sir a very warm welcome to you sir thank you tejas thanks a lot uh, for this opportunity to college dunia and to you um, and we've been looking forward to you know telling more and more people students about what we're doing uh, and how we are preparing students for the future yeah. in nm and mms bangalore yeah sure sir uh, you know that uh, brings me to the question first and uh, you know when we talk about uh, your field especially analytics ai and ml and something that is really really emerging at this point in time and especially given the pandemic a lot of uh, you know companies have moved digital and uh, they are using a lot of ai and ml right so uh, what is uh, you know what is so special about this course or you know any particular program that you are offering in the ai and ml you know that is actually helping a students to outperform and stand from the crowd that is there yeah okay so as you know there's a lot of uh, uh activity or hype if you want to call it around artificial intelligence and machine learning but what has happened over the past definitely a decade and it, it, this is these are not new fields these are not new areas they've been there for 50 years so of late the number of use cases are growing how these are applied or how industry is applying and that's so during my stint in the industry what was very clear was they are so unique the number of opportunities are so unique and the industry is extremely underskilled so there is there is a lot of skill requirement and the best part of ai ml or uh, ai and machine learning is it's a combination of three things one you need statistics a good knowledge of statistics and yeah. analytics so that's the mathematics part of it then second thing is you need a very strong uh, understanding of the computer skills because in the end it is technology that's delivering these ai uh, you know algorithms as we call it yeah. so the algorithms are the programs which actually make ai work yeah. Yeah. so uh, again just as a definition of ai ai is essentially how do you make machines think and behave like human beings and machine learning is a subset of ai which tells how machines learn so learning is one of the most important parts of intelligence right so that's that's how these two are linked and so therefore machine learning in its uh, you know has has had tremendous strides it has made in terms of one starting from the basic uh you know automating uh processes which also is sometimes called robotic process automations okay. so how do you automate existing operations and second is more important and that is a smaller use case the bigger use cases are much more important this yeah. how do these uh, technologies help you get new markets get new segments how do you look at new customers in a new light how do you you know reach out best to customers how do you improve the customer experience Yeah. so in all of these areas uh, which are all very strategic very long term large you know disruptions so that's how you see small companies are able to disrupt the large giants but just using technologies in the right way right i mean you can always go about a lot of you uber and a lot of those examples are there but essentially it is how well you can apply this technology and yeah. that is the third component right so one was statistics analytics then next was computers these two were ready but third is when you start applying the domain that is the industry so you look at an industry you look at the problems and then you apply analytics with computers these three actually combine and the intersection of these three is in a way data science or ai ml right yeah. and that is what they are all these three are working so well together now and they are all mature now so therefore you see more and more right so to answer the question we saw a lot of this um, interest and uh, these are genuine use cases beyond the hype yeah. so happening and we knew there was a dearth of such technology skilled people uh, who were able to handle technology okay 
so that is one of the reasons why we started working uh, closer and uh, that's also my interest you know in, in how do we develop this skill sets and also i personally wanted to build a career in analytics as a core focus and sir uh, when you talk about uh, you know um, having the computer knowledge statistics right? uh, but what are the main factors that uh, will help students choose this particular course or you know what are the main factors that why students should go for an analytics or an ai and ml course in general okay so one uh, one of course there is a demand that's the number one thing so there is a demand and second is i think this is a brilliant mix like i was explaining how why is it so good for an mba is to do this right it's even an engineers can even engineers do this of course engineers are data scientists and stuff but with an mba you add that integrative skills as we call it and that's what an mim is focuses on right so you integrate the domain which is your knowledge of say retail industry finance industry uh, different manufacturing so you bring in that industry context through cases and all of that and then apply the tools like artificial intelligence tools yeah. to solve industry problems and that requires an integrative mba approach okay right? so the toolkit is like an mba while he understands the business now right. what he does is he also has a toolkit now he can go he she go to a tool use the toolkit to start delivering results for specific business problems yeah. using ai and ml sure so and sir uh, when you talk about this uh, so what are the best uh, practices that uh, you know your course is offering as in this corner what are the best practices that you follow in nmims in this particular course okay yeah okay that that's a good question in fact we, this is constantly evolving we have been working uh, first is we benchmark uh, with what the industry wants so we very work very closely with placements and industry so we interact with industries multiple ways so for example we work one is the easiest is a guest lectures we do the guest lectures where we interact with industry we do hackathons some of the biggest brand names have come for hackathons and hackathons are i think the best way in which an industry gains because it brings its problems to a college with young fresh minds and there are some experienced you know, uh, faculty like us and we have labs we have invested and mim has invested substantially in those labs and centers of excellence uh, where we can you can start up trying to find out solutions to these industry problems so it's a way it's a win win situation all three of us work together where the students the college and the industry to solve an industry problem so what how this helps the students they gain they understand the industry problems in depth what they've learned on books is now brought out very very clearly and it happens over a couple of days so there's a lot of interactions with industry with faculty we understand industry industry understand students and yeah so so that has worked very well for us sure and sir how does this uh, this program or this course uh, ensure that you know the students of what they are learning uh, you know with the guest lectures and hackathons how do you ensure that uh, students are being prepared well for the future okay so if you look at executive education where we get our word of mouth is very strong uh, we because we have i think the, the, we have a mix of faculty which is both very very academic they publish books and they're well renowned in this area and also of course we have industry veterans uh, so it's a good mix of that and for our executive education so these are mid career professionals so when mid career professionals come to a college it it is they are very specific they very clear they know what they want it's unlike a fresh mba who is literally open to any opportunities these are mba who who want to do an mba because they have a specific organization role they are performing and so they know the business problems they understand the domain so they come here and then we equip them with the skills so this is where we find it most effective you you know the industry you know your job you're doing it well how do you do it better teach me the skills teach me how others are doing it better right so i think it's a beautiful mix in executive education and we are able to bring it all together and that is where i think it is really making a difference for executive education when we can even of course for fresh mbas what we do we give them enough uh, you know cases we we follow a case study we have hard word uh, content cases so we follow that and of course we have a lot of um, industry examples we bring in like i said again experienced uh, industry people so we interact and make sure it's a very project hands on training yeah we try to do as much as we can hands on project training yeah um, that's the approach and so that uh, you know actually brings me to a question where 
uh, how do you train yourself or even the faculty to deliver this program effectively to the students sure so no 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 you right so i think you had asked also a very interesting question how do we keep ourselves you know updated with the latest yeah. okay and therefore once the faculty is updated with the latest we can ensure that the students are also updated and you know uh, are the latest so one is uh, what we do is we uh, we make sure that we first is especially in technologies like ai artificial intelligence it is a very nascent field and there is every day there is news and new applications happening so one of course uh, like i said thankfully we have access to the global best uh, with the tharword and things so we use all of that second is like with industry interactions we try to understand one the global context and second is the indian context so both contexts we understand um, and, and we keep ourselves updated and we have a center of excellence as i said so we are setting that up currently in bangalore where this essentially is to bring in expertise so there'll be data scientists and experts who understand the technology and the skills and the tools okay so we get in the latest uh, visualization software so we have all the latest softwares uh, there and in addition to that we have the industry experience faculty and academic faculty and we do publish a lot of research papers so a lot of research academic research um, there is a focus on how we do research and therefore when you do research what we automatically have to do is look at the latest advances right so that that's a part of the research process so we build on the research work of others so therefore we are aware of the latest happenings and of course we have an interesting thing called clubs uh, in nmims so we have clubs and committees so what these clubs and committees do as as a rule they they actually are very outgoing outward seeking and they get in whatever information they can get okay and then they come to us with a specific you know advanced thing that they want more information or so we interact we have symposiums we have conference papers last time we had done one uh, where it's a conference paper okay uh, so we a very well attended conference where industry a lot of people come you can present a paper so therefore we are completely aware of the latest that's happening so a lot of ways in which we keep ahead or at least in touch with the latest but absolutely you're right that is one of the biggest constraints um, that a lot of colleges face how do you yourself keep updated so that you can then update and make future proof make your students future proof Yes, that's a very valid point. Okay. Yeah. And so how do you how do you tend to establish the industry connect that is required with the college uh, for this particular program? So we've been very fortunate um uh, because especially in the executive program, right? So they come from the industry and there is uh, I mean I don't mean it as any other this thing because and this is I'm just repeating what I've heard from others. So all, a lot of the word of mouth comes up right it's yeah. a, it's driven by word of mouth because typically you have a boss who goes comes to nmims in bangalore and studies executive education and then you will see that at least two or three people they refer and they join so we have a, a, the, some of the best names the global biggest names who we are fortunate in bangalore to have a you know a environment where all these big global brands work uh, you know have offices in india yeah. so we have employees from all these top organizations who come to us purely by word of mouth right so they for uh we we get that word of mouth is i think our biggest uh, uh you know validation yeah. that we are relevant we are adding a value and this is a commitment of weekend from people it's a lot of time and money that they're committing and still they're willing to do that okay and so we've seen people with 19 years experience they are they come to our executive education and they come to us with their business problems their current job these things and then we yeah. try to find solutions for them make it relevant so any project we give will be we'll make sure it is relevant for their current role so they can proceed progress and make a difference in their current job and current organization right so so any challenges you faced while uh, inculcating this program into the college yeah good absolutely yeah so every time uh, and i must tell you this because as a process uh, you know it is new to me and it's it may be surprising to a lot of people but in academics i'm i'm very happy to say one thing that is it's driven very corporate a lot of academic institutions are very corporate in the way they work in terms of the quality let me explain so for example if we want to make a change in the course we have to present it to something called a board of studies okay, okay. the board of studies has the who's who okay? okay so if you pick up the directors of some of the biggest companies okay global indian companies 
you can think of any of the big Indian companies, and I mean, I'm not saying all of them, of course, yeah. uh, a lot of the big names that you get. So these are industry people. I mean, these are people who are quoted in the papers every day, kind of thing, yeah. right? Mm. So those are the kind of people who actually look at the course content, okay? And then we get an opportunity to bounce off ideas with them. So therefore, anything that we do makes. So if you ask me, it is not a challenge. This is the this is how we wet our courses. Yeah. So which means we have to bring our course content to that caliber where these people think yes, if if they represent the industry and the industry is what is you know works with us uh, in terms of you know we are industry is our primary uh, you know place where our students are placed. Right. Okay, so we make sure that it's relevant. So that you have is, I think, the way the yes. challenge. Yeah. The challenges are multiple. So, for example, like I said, creating a course theoretical is easy, yeah. right? It is how do you make it relevant? Because for an MBA, they may not need to understand the the uh, you know they, they they will need to understand the basics concepts on that. But more than that, they need to build on top of that and add the domain context, as I say, right? Yes. The domain context is yeah, the how do you apply it? So the business domain context. Yeah. So that's important. Okay. So, sir, any projects that your current students are working on at this point in time that you would like to share with us? Uh, I'm sorry. So, what was it? What is the yeah. sorry, I So, I'm I'm saying that any there, are there any projects that you know the current students or any projects that the students who have passed out have worked in the past that you would uh, you know like to share with us? Yeah. Okay. Interesting. So there are some uh, students who actually have are have startups, won awards. Uh, some of the research faculty have uh, been judged as the best paper research papers. And especially in AI, we are doing some very interesting projects, which is at the cutting edge of retail. Okay. In fact, there is one that we are working close with a drone technology, drone technologies. So there are many interesting things that are happening. And uh, even for banking and finance, we're working with some of the top banks globally, uh, of course, represented in India. So we're working with them to build in AI machine learning algorithms best in class. So you will see, and we are also looking at quantum computing in you know, trying to understand the, how it fits in. And we're going to do some research papers on that. Okay. So we learn, yeah. So these are ways in which we believe that, you know, we, these are interesting areas. Yes. IoT is a classic case. So uh, industry 4.0 is has been uh, important for us. It is uh, what do you call it is a, uh, a mandate or a dictate from the top that you know we make our course extremely STEM enabled. Yeah. Okay. So industry 4.0 technologies and stuff, right? Science, technology, engineering, mathematics. So all of them we are very very focused on. Loved it. But of course, the, the thing is, this is an MBA course, so we, we want to make it very, very business application oriented. Yes. It is not pure research or pure technology. Yeah. So the focus is going to be on how do you apply this to the business and make business make a difference to the business. That will be our only measure, if you ask me, Tejas, is have our students made a difference to the industry. Okay, And that's where I come back, and that's what I was impressed me with NM also. I'm new to NM. What's impressed me with NM is, uh, most of our placements are all repeats and a lot of them when we ask them they say we've come here because we like the students who's, yeah. who's joined who's joined us right there's, there's nothing better for a college than a word of mouth and the quality of its existing students okay. alumni alumni is our strength and that's where i think we make a difference yeah. so sir uh, you know my last question to you and especially about the students uh, who want to pursue this so what are the benefits that you say and what are the career options once you have completed your uh, let's say MBA in analytics and you are you know well seasoned with the analytics AI and I mean what are the career options available to a student yeah. oh. there are um, so where I'm seeing this headed so one is industry as industry starts applying more and more of AI and as more and more technology so it's always it never works individually you need say for example drone is a different technology which is more of you know aerodynamics and physics and a lot of these things motors robotics when that combines with ai when that combines with the business problem you have a new solution right so that's one so it's always going to be where many multiple areas start combining and we create start creating solutions around that okay, okay. so we believe that that's where we want to place students we want to give our students of what is happening at least now for sure 
and maybe three years, five years down. So we want to prepare them for this. So what we hope the career benefits for a student are going to be one, they're relevant for today's requirement, but they were also skilled enough to contribute and direct and help their teams and bosses in the next couple of you know, years. So they should make that difference. They should be aware of what is happening later. So there are tremendous progress I see in the area of uh, marketing uh, analytics, in the area of retail analytics. I see machine learning, AI, robotics, like I said, in yeah. operations and supply chain. Everywhere you touch, it is making a difference. And with the industry 4.0, so that, that's the, the, again, like I said, the industry 4.0, AI, ML, and domain. Again, coming in together and again, new opportunities coming up. So there are a lot of opportunities. Okay. Yeah. So with the right kind of guidance, and we hope that our, we'll be able to give our students the right career, other things. And this is just one more thing which I forgot to mention. So what important things that we've done, again, driven by COVID, but I mean, accelerated by COVID, yeah. I would say that. But what we have been doing in our college is a blended learning. So what we, for example, especially if you look at executive education, right, MBA, what is one of the biggest challenges is they have multiple, uh, what we call priorities, okay? Right. Work and work from home is tough. It's not easy. I mean, we all know how difficult it is work from home. It's not as easy as it sounds, yeah. okay? Second thing is then they have the families to take care of, right? And then they have studies and the NM is a very rigorous course. We are very clear. We will never compromise the quality of the course. It's a very rigorous course. And we will never compromise. We believe in know all of that and needs to be practiced hands-on, right? So it's rigorous. So what we realized was physically, sometimes it's difficult for students to come. These, yeah. these executives, okay? they can come. And so for blended learning anyway was part of our plan. And therefore, when COVID have hit us, we actually took a day to switch okay, okay. to full online. So for us, it was actually not very difficult. We switched yeah. and, you know, that's one of the... Even we are all surprised we look back. We almost have lost no days. In fact, very few days at all if we've lost. Because the switch has been seamless. Yeah. And we plan to continue it with a blended component of every learning will be blended. So you'll have physical. If you want to be physically present, yes, we have a live online. Of course, we have a recording. So synchronous, asynchronous and things. And so that's becoming a more and more uh, component so that everyone can kind of benefit from this. So are you looking it's flexibility. So are you looking at it in the future courses as well or yes, uh, yes, yes, you're looking at it. All future courses are going to be. So there are two things that exist, especially in executive education, there are two things that we pride ourselves on. One is flexibility, right? Yeah. Flexibility in choice of how you want to learn online. That is wherever you want to. But of course, there will be physical. There is a component of physical, which is a must. There is nothing can replace human interaction, peer to peer learning. Yes. Okay. Social interactions, workshops. So that is physical. Okay. There, we will not compromise. And the second uh, is it's also going to be live. It's not going to be a recorded distance learning kind of a thing. It is live. So you'll interact. We will give you quizzes. We'll ensure you learn. Learning outcomes will ensure. Second thing we're doing in our executive education, especially uh, is our, um, you know, we, it's little, we have more electives than we have students. Okay. Sometimes I joke. So even if, so more electives, so the choice and why do we do this? Because we know that every executive is already working in a field. He knows what they want. He, she know what they want. So we give them the opportunity to build and learn what they want to learn rather than forcing them. This is a standard curriculum. You take this. I am an MBA. I will teach you MBA. No, it is. If you want to learn about operations, here it is. If you want to learn operations, HR and strategy, this is the combination. So you create your own course, right? And we are a globally accredited MBA in the end, right? So, and these are uh, MBA, the things which anywhere in the world you go, you can show proudly show this. It's Amber accredited. So that's these are some of the things, key things that I think work well for NM and have worked well in for NM. Definitely, I think it's a lot of things apart from this. I mean, uh, you know, having such senior faculty, uh, industry experts, having so many hackathons, guest lectures, having that industry connect. I think uh, you know that has what pulled NM to uh, you know a brand uh, that students recognize with and you know associate with. So uh, that's all from my side. Uh, thank you. That is that is the hope. That's objective, and that's what we're working towards. I'm hoping we can make the difference to the students and to the industry. Okay. Sure. sure. Thank you so much uh, for taking out your precious time and uh, talking to us about your course, about the college, about the students, alumni, and faculty there. 
uh, so we are really really honored to have you once again on our platform and uh, look forward to uh, interacting with you again thank you very much sir once again yeah thanks again tejas like i said uh, it's impressive the work college dunia has done and the kind of you know students you've garnered i'm hoping that you know together we can reach out to them and help them with their career decisions whatever is right for their career and their lives decisions